Vamos. It's working. There you go. What's going on, world? So, I, I heard some of the best news I've ever heard in my life. I thought a great way to celebrate would be with a nice big bottle of champagne. So, we're going to go ahead and pop this top, right? And then I'm going to explain this news. I have dealt with a lot of shit in my life, to say the least. And I got news tonight. Now, I know this is a wine glass, but it's my blue glass. And I'm fucking obsessed with blue glass. So, I'm just going to set that right there because uh, I'm going to fill that motherfucker up. Now we're going to start. Ooh. So, what is this news, you might be asking yourself. Well, I was told by a little bitty bitty birdie. That my sperm donor fucking croaked. He's dead. How can fucking life be any goddamn better? It can't. I can't think of one single thing. That would make my life better than the news that he's dead, fucking gone. Sayonara, see ya. Don't want to ever fucking hear your voice again. Won't have to look at your face ever again. You fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Now, I will say that to a certain degree, it does, uh, Upset me a little bit. Not for the reason you might think. Say I'm upset. Because I will never have the opportunity. To explain to him. How much he negatively impacted. My entire life. From the day I met that sorry sack of shit. To today. I have never been able to. Convey to him. Um, just how much he fucked up my life. Um, you know, every turn, you know, when I was, when I was a boy, you know, he, uh, he did a lot of fucking bad shit. Um, uh, went through almost every kind of abuse from him. Um, you know, that included psychological abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. Um, yeah, he, he just really fucked me up, up here. And I, I will tell you that for most of my life, um, I have gone through each day deciding or not deciding, but coming up with new ways that if I ever got the opportunity to torture this motherfucker the way that he tortured me. Um, 
but to do, you know, three years of abuse in, say, 30 minutes or three hours. Um, so that's how I've gone through most of my life, most of the days of my life, um, just fantasizing and, and daydreaming about what I could potentially do to this sorry sack of bones to convey the message of how much he fucked up my life and how much better my life would have been if he would have just never fucking been in it. Now, for those of you who don't know, I left home at 13. Uh, I was tired of him beating my ass. I was tired of him telling me I was a worthless piece of shit. And, um, so I left home. I got tired of it. Uh, first time I ever slept in a cardboard box, I was, uh, it was just after my 13th birthday. Um, and it just, yeah, I, I, I would, I would have, I would have and did, uh, rather to, rather than stay at home and sleep in a bed, um, where for all I know, he could fucking wake me up by beating my ass. Um, yeah, I, I, I would have rather fucking slept in a cardboard box behind a store in Modesto, California, um, than spend another night, spend another minute, spend another second in his fucking presence. Uh, sorry sack of shit. Um, yeah. Now, I, I, I don't want you to mis... I, I don't want my words to be misconstrued. Um, you know, I don't, I don't blame him for all the bad shit that ever happened in my life. Okay, that's, that's not what I'm talking about here. This is something completely different. What I do blame him for... Refill is the psychological impact that he had on me because that is what was lifelong that is what ended up lasting that is something that's carried over for the last almost 30 years and it's been day in and day out you know um Without a doubt, he's the reason why I, I'm pretty sure he's the reason why I have uh, a schizophrenia. I'm pretty sure that uh, the emotional impact that it had on me is the reason why I'm bipolar. Ooh, Ooh. good champagne, Bert. But it, it, it just, he, he's a sorry sack of shit. Well, hi there. And I am not okay with the way he treated me as a child. No, I'll say he never, ever put his hands on my sisters. Uh, he never, ever uh, even called them some of the names that he would regularly call me. Okay, go, go, go. Good girl. She's deaf, so I have to use hand signals. Um... I mean, yeah, he, he was just a sorry sack of shit. Um, you know, he, he tried to explain <clears throat> a couple of times that, you know, his father was way worse with him. And, you know, that's a really shitty way to think about it because, you know, he still had such a huge negative impact on my entire life. Uh, you know, uh it's the reason why I've always had abandonment issues, why I've always had issues with authority figures. Uh, the reason why I ended up having a chemical imbalance in my brain, which has caused me to be a paranoid schizophrenic and bipolar and borderline personality disorder and, you know, all this other shit that's been going on in my life, you know? Uh, some of my physical... Uh, issues have uh, been because of the abuse that I endured from this fucking cocksucker. Um, and I just, 
there's not an ounce of give a fuck in my body because I don't give a fuck. He's definitively never going to see me again. I'm definitively never going to see him again. You know, and I told him, I said, the last time I spoke to him, um, I said, look, the next time I see you, I am going to break your fucking face. It's exactly what I said to him. Um, now, he, he went to San Quentin twice. Uh, he was on the same cell block, as the story goes, as uh, uh, Charlie Manson. I think there's, I think there's a lot of ways that he modeled himself after Charles Manson, the way he dressed, the way he spoke, the way he uh, behaved, his his psychological state of mind. You know, he was just really fucked up in the head, and it caused a lot of uh, a lot of issues uh, for the rest of his life, which he then imparted upon me. Now, he said that he never knew I existed until the day he met me. Um, now, as that story goes, it's because the second time he went to San Quentin, um, that day, well, the day he got arrested, um, he was packing up his truck with everything that he and my older sister had because he was taking my older sister and was leaving my mom. And again, as the story goes, uh, he told my mother to say goodbye to Lynette, my sister, and uh, went inside the, uh, the motel room because that's where they were living, was in a motel room. Um, and she scooped up my sister and ran to the office and called the cops. Uh, I guess he had uh, put a cop in a wheelchair uh, from beating him so badly. Um, and that was, if I'm not mistaken, that was his prime for which he went back to San Quentin for the second time. Um and so she ran to the office, called the cops. She was pregnant with me, but he claims he didn't know that. And while he was in prison, my mother ended up meeting my stepfather. And again, as the story goes, my mother thought that my father filed for divorce. My father says that he thought my mother filed for divorce, but neither one of them did. So my mother ended up marrying my stepfather. And after, I don't know, I think it was like eight years, maybe nine years um, of being together and thinking that they had been married, uh, he comes into the picture because apparently my older sister wanted to meet him. And that event that occurred on that day in Modesto, California, changed my entire life uh, completely changed the direction that i could have went um but you know i'll never know what i might have could have should have been had things gone differently uh less than six months after after we all met uh my mother moved him back back in um uh, he moved into my mom and my stepfather's bedroom. My stepfather was kicked out onto the couch and told, you know, you got six months to find a place to live and get the fuck out. Um, you know, so my stepfather saw a lot of the abuse that I actually was enduring. Um, you know, so I'm, again, I'm, I'm just celebrating, you know, not, Everybody celebrates when their father dies, but I'm fucking enjoying this. So I'm going to drink this bottle of champagne by my fucking self.
Then I got some ciders. I'm going to have a good fucking night tonight. I'm not going to go to bed till fucking like midnight because I'm not going to stop until this bottle's done. My apple ciders are done. Um, I think I've got some Kettle One vodka in the fridge that I ran through another Brita filter. Uh, so it's been filtered again. Um, I'm pretty sure that's going to be gone. I'm, I'm just going to get fucked up tonight because this is the best news that I could have ever been told because now I no longer have to worry about what prison I might go to if I were to ever see him again because it's on it, it was on site you know if you don't know what that means the phrase on site it means that when you see that person when you sight them with your own eyes um you're basically gonna fucking kill them. um that's <laughs> that's a quick version of what it means uh, and I, I told him you know i will break your fucking face if i ever see you again i never went looking for him um you know so i i wasn't gonna put myself in a position to where I would find him you know I didn't go to truck stops he was a truck driver for the last 20 25 years um you know but I I, I knew that if I were to ever see him again I, I'm definitely gonna go to prison that was an understanding that I had and it, it's it's fortunate that I don't have to endure that uh you know like I said earlier um the the fantasies the uh daydreams you know the 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 thoughts of different things i could do to him to impart upon him the same harshness that he imparted upon me you know he didn't help hold anything back this this sorry sack of shit he would he he would fucking beat my ass and I don't mean spanking me with the belt. I mean, he he, he spanked my ass a couple of times. And I, I legit could not sit down for two or three days because my ass was fucking bruised. Purple, black, and blue fucking bruises all across my ass. Um, and you know, one of those events, uh, I received that beating for eating a 99-cent bag of butterscotch chips. Yeah. 99 cent bag of butterscotch chips. I ate it. I'm a kid. They were in the fridge. Fuck it. You know, I'm going to have them. For a dollar. One dollar. Got me that ass whoop. You know, he, he would fucking punch me in my face. Slap me over and over and over and over again. For bringing him the wrong fucking tool. He beat my ass one time. For, for bringing him a crescent wrench instead of the monkey wrench when I was fucking 11, 12 years old because I didn't know what the fuck a wrench was. I, I, I ran away I think it was either six times in seven weeks or seven times in six weeks. I, I don't really remember. Um, but I was trying every fucking way possible to get out of that house. You know, I didn't want to be in his presence. I didn't want to be under his fucking control because either he was going to kill me or I was going to kill him. And I didn't want that to be the thing that came to fruition. So, you know, I made the decision. I left home at 13. Uh, and, you know, yeah, we had a few conversations throughout the years. But, but, uh, but I... I will never have that opportunity to have that good reason to go back to prison. And to be honest, I, I previously I was okay with going back to prison for that sole purpose of imparting upon him everything that he imparted upon me in three years. Like I said, if I could do it in three minutes, 30 minutes, three hours, that was ideal, you know? Um, I had many thoughts about fucking seeing him, stuffing him in the fucking trunk and driving him out into the middle of fucking nowhere, bumfucked Egypt, 
put him in a fucking shed, tie him to a chair, and I don't, I don't know if y'all ever saw the, I forget which, um, I forget which James Bond film it was, but I'm pretty sure it was Daniel Craig. Uh, he was stripped naked, and he was tied to a chair that had no bottom on it. It had no seat. So his ass was sticking through, and there was a big-ass thick piece of rope that was knotted, and he'd whirl it and then swing it under the chair so it'd come up and smack him in his fucking balls. I, oh, when I saw that happen in the movie, I was like, that's fucking it. I want to do that. I want to fucking give that to him. But now I can let all of those emotions, all of the fantasies, all of the desires to see him incapacitated. Um, you know, I'll never get that chance and I'm okay with that because it's, it's better for me. Because now I don't have to deal with the repercussions that would come from such an event like that. You know, I don't I don't know whoever's watching this, you know, I, I don't know what kind of life you had, but I mean <laughs> I, I I wouldn't wish my childhood on my worst enemy. That's how fucking bad it was. And the fact that I'm still a good person, the fact that I'm not uh, I'm not a very hubristic kind of guy, you know, like I, I don't, I don't roll that way, you know, once upon a time, yeah, there was a little bit of hubris involved in, in my ego, but, you know, since then I've grown up, I've learned a lot and I've, I've really grown. So I'm going to celebrate for tonight. Who knows? Maybe tomorrow and the next day, maybe I'll stop on Monday. I don't fucking know, but what I do know is that my life just got a hundred times easier because now I don't have to worry about going to prison. I don't have to worry about where am I going to hide the body? I don't have to worry about what's going to happen. Who's going to be around if I see this son of a bitch. And then I, I react in a way that I know I would react and you know, who, who would try to stop it? Oh, this, this guy's beating up this old man. No, he's a fucking sorry sack of shit that needs his ass whooped every day for the rest of his fucking life. That's, that was my thinking. That was my, my train of thought. That was the way my mind worked. So I'm, you know, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to enjoy the evening. Uh, you know, going to watch a little bit of TV. Uh, I don't know, something on Netflix. I haven't figured out what yet, but I'm going to enjoy my bottle of champagne. I'm going to try to get as drunk as fucking possible within the next, you know, four or five hours. And, um, yeah, I'm going to have fun this evening. So if you've ever gone through some of what I may have spoken about tonight, you know, I would love to hear in the comments your opinions, your thoughts, you know, um, maybe a little bit of your story if you're comfortable sharing it with me and whoever else might be reading the comments, um, you know, because you got to get that shit out, you know, if you if you leave it in here and if you leave it up here, it's, it's, it's going to fucking eat at you day after day after day and year after year and eventually it's going to turn into decades like it did for me and I, I, I feel complete now, you know, um, he's, he's never gonna know, but I know for a fact, you know, being a Buddhist, um, I know that his next life is going to be just as fucked up, if not more fucked up than mine was this time around, you know, cause that's, that's what Kama is all about. K-H-A-M-M-A, -M -M -A. not karma. That's Sanskrit for the same thing. In Buddhism, it's called kama, K-H-A-M-M-A. -M -M -A. Um, you know, and it's, 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 it's our way of life, you know? So I can, I can let this go. I can, you know, become a bigger, better person and put more value in knowing that I'm still a better person than he could be in 10,000 lifetimes, you know? Um, so like I said, share, like, comment, but 
I hope you get some kind of closure like I'm getting closure tonight. So until next time, keep your head up, keep your feet on the ground, have a couple of drinks if you need it. Don't hold that shit in because it will, it will turn you into a monster that you may not be able to bounce back from. So have a good night, y'all. Peace.